All right, we got right. episode 12 of Hall 9 Romine Ball Talk. We got a uh, got a banger today. We got a um, launch do. angle, probably one of the most controversial topics in baseball over the last couple of years. You know, you get, you get a lot of people triggered when they hear launch angle, which triggered. I was one of the, like four or five years ago, I was one of those guys that was like, don't say launch angle. These kids I've worked with, they're all going to try to hit pot flies and Yep. It's just going to be nothing but fly outs to right field. And I changed my tune pretty quick because uh, the more I started thinking about it and watching. So anybody here who's watching this, if you hear launch angle get triggered, open your mind a little bit, listen to what we have to say, and, uh, you know, see if maybe we'll change your opinion. Maybe we won't. That's fine. But have right. you listen. So this this started coming about, as far as I knew, maybe five or five or six years ago when it really became like a topic of conversation. And like you said, the taboo, oh, everybody's gonna try and hit fly balls. And I I think it kind of gets a little misconstrued because every single ball that we hit has an angle. There is some kind of an angle off of the bat that the ball is taking. Right. So So, yeah, I guess launching could be a ground ball. It could it could be a ground ball, it could be it could be backwards you could foul the ball backwards and it still has a certain angle. So I think when, when you do a little research on it and you realize there's an optimal launch angle, which I think people are leaving that word out because there's good and there's bad numbers. So I think the big thing that we need to focus on right now is probably the optimal launch angles and what we're shooting for, but most importantly, how to get that. Not just, right. not just putting the ball in the air or you could you could still hit uh, a good launch angle but the wrong way which yeah. i think a lot of people forget right and i think what happened is i think once like espn and all these people started talking about launch angle it was always mixed in with like aaron judge hitting a home run or launch angle and stanton hits a home run and everyone's like well that's great but my 12 year old kid's not as strong as aaron judge or stan so how how is launch angle apply to us? Like my kid can't miss hit a ball and hit a home run like those guys can. They're just not that strong. Right. And you know, and so I think that's where this whole topic like went south pretty quick with people is because they're like, oh well, my kid's not a big leader yet, so this is stupid. This doesn't work. Right. And uh, I think we should go right into that part of it as the one launch angle for Aaron Judge is probably going to be bad for another younger kid in Little League because Aaron Judge is hitting the ball 115 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah. So if you're, if you're hitting the ball 115 miles off the bat, your launch angle is going to be a little bit higher for yourself than, say, a kid who's hitting the ball 60 or 70 miles per hour off the bat. Let's say you do put it at the same launch angle as him. Let's say you put it at a 30-degree launch angle and you hit it 60 or 70 miles per hour it might not be see and this gets into some mathematical equations where you're not going to have the ball travel as far if you're hitting it 70 miles an hour at that at this angle versus this angle now right. judge can hit it at that angle because it's going to carry further and that's right. what he wants to do yeah exactly so i guess i guess a good thing to talk about right now would be what the angles are i mean if we're talking this is zero flat parallel to the ground if this is the ground and you hit the ball flat parallel to the ground, you're at a zero launch angle. Right. Right. And if you hit the ball straight down into the ground, you're probably hitting it at a negative 15 or 20 or 30 degree angle. Right. So where people are, are looking for is that optimal 25, 30 degrees. And it's tough to say that one specific degree is going to be the best one because it's not. Some are different for other people, like we said. Well, and we can't, I mean, there's no way I can physically swing to hit a ball at 20 degrees. Like the, how fast everything happens. I cannot calculate that as the ball's coming in and be like, Oh, I better get my barrel here. So I'm coming this way to get it exactly 20, 20 degrees. You know, you're, you're trying to be within that, like, I don't know, maybe like 10 to 40 degree range, like as, as consistently as possible. That way you're getting a lot of balls that are going out this direction versus this direction or this direction. You know, if you can have like that broader, you know, range that you want to hit in. Right. 
And that, that leads me into what I always tell people when we're talking about launch angle. You're not trying to hit the ball at a certain angle. You're trying to hit the ball at a, on the ball at a certain spot. Right. If I hit the ball on the top of the ball, then my launch angle will directly be related to that. So it's probably going to go down. Right. Physics say that it's going to go down. So if, I, if I'm shooting for the bottom half of the ball, which I tell everybody that I do lessons with, bottom half of the ball, stop hitting ground balls. You might be able to get away with ground balls right now because you're in Little League, but pretty soon they're going to field those ground balls and you're going to be out every time. Yep. It's amazing how I used to be like, hey, let's hit everything hard towards the side. If you're a righty, let's hit everything hard towards the second baseman, hard backspin ground balls that way because that's going to really translate. And now when I see guys hitting ground balls, I'll literally walk like probably 40 feet in front of home play, like if I'm in a cage, and I'll point straight up. And I'm like, I want you to hit every ball right into this part of my cage, like straight up here. And it's amazing how they don't actually hit it there. They start hitting like batch spin line drives towards the back of the net. And they might hit one or two up there. But if it's like a seven or eight round, it's usually like five or six or just smoked line drives and maybe two or a little bit higher. And I'm like, that's what we're looking for. Because you haven't had a round yet where you've hit, you know, two hard ground balls and four line drives. It's always been like four or five ground balls mixed in with like two hard line drives. But now that you're trying to elevate a little bit more, now you've got four or five line drives and only maybe like two, two fly balls and maybe one rollover. So right. now it's like your consistency, just because you were trying to hit the ball a little bit higher, went way up. And it's funny because there's two things. One, you passed, you went right over backspin, which to me, if you backspin a ball, you're doing something right. Yep. You're, you're in the right direction. Now, sometimes you can backspin balls a little, you know, it's a pop-up or whatever, but you're still headed in the right direction. Right. Uh, as opposed to somebody who pounds a topspin ground ball into the ground, maybe you hit it on the barrel, but I'd rather, I'd rather be shooting for that backspin, which yeah. leads into if you're trying to hit a ball up, you have to hit the bottom. If you're yep. trying to hit a ball down, you have to hit the top. So they're opposites. And it's right. hard for some kinds – Sometimes younger kids have a hard time wrapping their brain around that. Yeah, really, really hard. And it's because it's what we've always been taught. Like, I've always been taught hands inside the ball and keep that barrel high towards the inside half this way. And everybody demonstrates it that way. Like, even A-Rod demonstrates it that way. But he does not swing this way at the ball. Right. I haven't, I haven't seen one video of him hitting where his back goes high, 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 and he whips in the zone and whips it out. Like, yeah. I've never seen him do that. And it's right. always yeah. back here, long through the zone. Not not long, but it's, it's through the zone, through the zone, through the zone. And then he finishes. You know, it's not. Right. That, that down to up swing, right? Yeah. Or I should, it's tough when you say up. Down to slightly, slightly up where yeah. you're trying to make. But, uh, you know, we talked about that in one of our other episodes when we talked about bat plane or swing plane and right. how, you know, it, it's down and up. But. It, it definitely touches on getting to a place where you're going to hit the ball on the right spot of the ball. And I do this a lot with my guys, younger guys. It helps quite a bit. I find when I put a ball on the tee and then I tell them to touch that spot on the ball. I say, you go up and you touch exactly where you want to hit it. With your finger, you touch that spot. And then they go back and they take their swing. Because right. if they go up and they touch that ball on the top or in the middle or on the outside of it or something – then you have automatic feedback saying, well, they don't know where the right place on the ball is to hit it. Right. And then, and then they wonder why they're hitting rollover ground balls to second or short. So yeah. easy way to get some feedback. Very easy. And like, that's a really good point for, for younger hitters, even like high school, college hitters is know what your goals are and have a goal for hitting that baseball. Like if you just go up there and swing a lot of times they're not going to be productive swings. But if you literally have a goal of either where you want to hit the ball on the ball or where you want to like try to drive that ball to, a lot of times your swings, the quality of your swings go way up because your brain is now focused on achieving a goal versus just hitting a baseball. You know, right. and, and so often like we get consumed with this baseball's coming in. I got to make contact with it. And all we think about is making contact with that ball. Well, there's, there's a hundred different ways I can make contact with that ball. And a lot of them are create rollovers 
And so like, if my goal is just to hit that ball, I'm much more likely to roll over. Whereas if my goal is to drive a ball into the outfield, even if it gets caught, I'm way less likely to roll over because I cannot hit a ball to the outfield if I roll. So if my goal is right. that, to hit it out there, the likeliness of me rolling over is very, very slim. Right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote my dad who taught me everything that I know up until I left the nest. But it, he was a huge preacher of you're trying to hit backspin line drives. And if you hit a ball out, if, if you hit a, a home run or something, that was usually an accident, right? Because you want to aim for that, that most forgivable range of launch angle. So if you're aiming for a 30 or a 35 degree launch angle and you miss it, you automatic fly out, right? Yeah. But if, yeah. You're, and if you're aiming for a 20, you know, somewhere in here and you miss that, you might be hitting a lot of ground balls. So you want to aim for that middle ground where you got that. And this is interchangeable for different ages, but that 23 to 30 ish range, right? Right. Depending on how big you are, your exit velocity, you know, how big your fields are. Um, but you want to aim in that area, you know, going around the, the late twenties would be a, a good range. And then if you miss, maybe I hit a home run cause I just missed it. Or maybe I hit, you know, a low, low liner through the infield because I just got a little bit on top of it. But you're still having that that range of area where you can miss a little and it results in something positive. Right. So let me ask you this question then. You got, let's say you have a 12-year-old kid, undersized. He's not going to hit any home runs. His coaches are telling him like, hey, if you hit the ball on the ground, if you hit a hard ground ball, your chance of getting a hit go way up. And so that's what he's trying to do. And he comes to you for a lesson. What are you, what are you working with him on? Are you, are you staying with that approach? Or are you going to, are you trying to change his mind a little bit? No, swing one after swing one. And he's most likely when I see kids come in and they, and they have coaches who tell them, I want you to hit a hard ground ball and beat it out. I'm thinking, first of all, all he's trying to do is get that kid on base because he just wants to win that game right now. He has yep. no, he, he has no concern about that kid's development and becoming yep. a good all-around hitter. He just wants to win a little league game, which yep. I think is extremely selfish for, you know, a, a little league coach or whatever level they're at. Now, yeah, scouts, scouts will ask you, you know, how did your little league season go? Like, how did you do when you were twelve? Scouts care about that. They want to know how many wins you had when you were. 12 years old. Yeah, you can, pack up that, you can pack up your sarcasm right now. I can, <laughs> I can take it right now dripping through the phone. There's no, <laughs> nobody gives a crap about whether you hit 700 in Little League or not. It doesn't matter. Nobody even no. cares what you hit in club baseball or travel or whatever you did, right? Nope. So you can pack that up and put it away. I, I want to develop a kid at the earliest age with the right kind of swing and mechanics so that it turns into, you know, maybe he grows. You don't know. Absolutely. I mean, a kid could get into high school and put on 30 pounds of muscle and become a power hitter. You have no idea. But if he goes into that, hit that stage of his life and he has a rollover, beat the ball into the ground swing, and then he puts on muscle, now he's just hitting the ball into the ground really hard. Right. Like it's, it, I'd rather get a, a really good foundation and the right mechanics and then strength can come later and that goes for pitching too we can touch on that in another episode but when they're teaching kids to throw weighted balls and throw as hard as you can as early as you can in their life and you don't even they're not even close to done growing yet they could no. they could grow six inches when they get into high school and then now they're throwing 90 like who knows and you're trying to get them to kill themselves right now just to throw a little bit harder when the focus right now should be getting the perfect mechanics down and then you can grow strength into that swing and your swing's good. I would say like most male athletes probably don't come into their prime strength wise until after like 18 years old, like 18 to 21, like 22 is like when your strength really, really starts to come in. Some guys might peak a little bit earlier, but I would say like the average male athlete isn't at full strength until probably 2021, 20, you know? And so to, to think like, oh, my 16 year old kid 
hits line drives, but he doesn't hit with a whole lot of power. So I want to make him a singles hitter. I want to make him hit the ball through the infield. It's crazy to me because even if you're, even if you are small and fast, why do you just want to hit singles? What if you hit a line drive in the gap that maybe doesn't get past the outfielders, but it's enough to make them go side to side to where you can still get a double out of it because you're fast. Hey, you know, look so at why, why, why are we trying to just get singles when I can, I can potentially get a double. Now, not every line drive that goes to the outfield is going to be a double for you, but you have much better chance of getting a double and a line drive to the outfield than you do a ground ball through the infield. So, I, look, at, look at Jose Altuve, smallest guy in the big leagues, always in the top tier of home runs. Yep. How is that? Why, if, if strength and size is so important, I guarantee you he's not out benching half of the people in the big leagues. There's, yeah. there's no way that that matters because he has the right mechanics. Yeah. He has, he has the right bat path, swing playing, launch angle, like all these things come together if you do them right from a young age and he has them all together and then he optimizes what he has and he doesn't need to be six foot six, 250 pounds like Aaron judge or whatever he is. And, and I think a lot of times, like from a consistency standpoint, he might be in an advantage because he's had to work probably so much harder to perfect that bat path to be that good to where now he can consistently do that where like a guy like Aaron Judge doesn't have to have that perfect bat path because he can just – he can miss hit a ball out to right field at Yankee Stadium yeah. all day long. But Altuve Great has point. to – like because of his, his size and strength, he has to probably have a very, very consistent bat path. And people might be like, oh, he's small at the disadvantage. But from a training standpoint, it might be a huge advantage because he's had to work so much harder to get there. And, and because of that, now he's so consistent because he's had to put extra time in. And I, I venture to believe that because he has the right mechanics and the right movements down, he can probably swing a little harder than other people because his swing won't break down when he starts right. to swing hard. Right. And another good example is our Trey Turner. He's one of the fastest guys in the big leagues, but he's not looking to hit ground balls to the infield. Yep. He's, I mean, that dude's constantly driving the ball to the outfield. He hits quite a bit of home runs. Bets, movie bets. Yeah. Another guy, I mean, he's no bigger than any of us, and that's that guy's leading the league in home runs at, at certain points during the year. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I – go ahead. I was going to say, I think, I think we need to focus a little more when we're teaching launch angle. I think we need to teach a little more about where we need to hit the ball, where our bat needs to connect on the ball to create launch angle. Not – we need to change our swing – to create launch angle. We don't need to swing up to hit the ball up. We need to hit the ball on the right place to hit the ball in the air. Yep. And I think, and, and for coaches, we need to start letting kids know that that, that deep fly out to the outfield is actually a really, really good swing. And that hard rollover between the five, six hole that was a hit was not a good swing. Yes, you got on base. Yes, your average went up. <laughs> But that was not a good swing. That fly out to the center fielder that you just had before that at bat was a much better swing than your rollover between the five six hole. Now Agreed. on paper it wasn't, but if you take that swing to hit that fly ball ten times, I guarantee you you're gonna have a much higher average than if you took that swing to hit the, the rollover ten times. Your average will be much lower. Guaranteed. Now when you go home and you get that rollover hit, you should still be still be happy that you got a hit but then you know you do your work in the cage and you fix it and you yep. try and get you try and get to more backspin line drives and and fix that that angle that you're looking for but Absolutely. play with it play with it right see what's good for you you can tell when the ball comes off the bat i mean you could be 10 11 12 years old it doesn't matter you could be 22 you know when you're hitting a ball and you see other guys hitting it a little higher and it's carrying well, maybe you don't have that power. Maybe you need to bring your launch angle down a little bit. And the yep. way you do that is by where you hit it on the ball. Yep. If you just, if you learn to watch the flight of your ball, it will tell you everything you need to know about your swing. Right. If you got good backspin and it's straight, your swing is great. If you're constantly getting topspin, you're probably either getting long or you're coming down and across the body way too much. Yep. So... Hit the right. ball a little bit higher in the air. Chris yeah, no more, no more ground balls. Angle. 
No more ground balls. Look, Dad, it's over. Dad, you're you're way too late. Yeah. You, you signed in way too late. Type okay. type something in here. Type a question in here, Ouija, for us to answer real quick before we go, because you joined way too late. <laughs> They just had, ASU just had their uh, recognition of the 81 World Series championship team. Last team at Arizona State to win the College World Series. I'm hoping he's typing or he knows that he can see where it says add a comment at the bottom there, Dad. Type something in here. We should have been the last team to win a World Series. We should have won that year. I know. We had a really good team. It's crazy. It's all about getting hot, man. Oregon State got crazy hot in the, the year we smoked organs i don't know you remember going to their place we won, we won all three games in a row good morning <laughs> <laughs> it's it's 10 30 dad everybody else we're not all retired everybody else is six <laughs> yeah some of us have six week year olds that get us up at uh at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> all right take us out of here all right, well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you learned something. Hope you uh, maybe change your mind a little bit on launch angle. Um, just keep working on it. Get a little better each time. And appreciate you uh, coming out. See you on the next one. Thanks, guys.